need to believe in what we do or we don't do. What will it profit? A Christian who just walks in the corner comes to the Father in the flesh and does not walk in the spirit. When God is spirit, how can we come to serve him in the flesh and desire that he would do exceedingly above what we think or imagine? Our flesh is just too much alive. It doesn't matter how glorious the tabernacle looks or how wonderful the place looks. You walk in Kana and walk out Kana, it doesn't profit you, it won't benefit you in any way. It will be null and void. It will not be different from any organization. Open your Bibles, John chapter 3. So we've been teaching about the most important thing that the believer should know and then be able to teach others be able to see a christian this is a word that we're supposed to take to everyone because this is the word that is so consequential in the scriptures from the mouth of jesus christ you see so our evangelism should be you know with a conviction that I understand the words of Jesus Christ. These words. Today let's read from verse 5 to 8. Amen. Jesus answered. Jesus. The son of the living God. The one that we, some of us were born. And then they plant us in. But it gets to a point. It is no more your father's God or your mother's God. It becomes your God. Amen. It mature to understand who that God is to you. It's not your neighbor. It's not your child. It's not your husband. It is you. Amen. Amen. You need to get to that level. You see, where we will be able to have encounter spiritually. Verily I say to thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, you cannot, tell your neighbor you cannot, except enter the kingdom of God. See, the most pitiful thing is, we, we call ourselves Christians, wherever you hear, you gathered, whatever, we want to enter into the kingdom of God. Otherwise, will you be here? You will not. See, that is the truth of it. But say you cannot enter except, you know, you are born of what? The spirit and the water. You cannot enter into the kingdom. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. There's no 20 ways about it. When you come in the flesh, you walk out in the flesh. Because that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. When you come and, you know, you cannot walk in the spirit. You walk in in the flesh. You walk in flesh and walk out flesh. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Seven. Marvel not. Marvel not. You see, this one gave me a very deep revelation because we pride ourselves so much in denominations. And I'm a Catholic. I would die a Catholic. Or oh, I'm a Presbyterian. I would die a Presbyterian. I'm QFC, Kodesh Family Church, or Lighthouse. I would die, you know. It's not a question of you being Presbyterian or Lighthouse or whatever, die, you know. It's a question of, are you born again? Except, so if you are in a Catholic church, you better be born again 
because this is the word of Jesus Christ. If you are in Kodesh Family Church, you better be born again because this is what will make you to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Marvel not because there are so many people who are marveling. This word born again has become almost like a laughing. Some people have even composed songs to, you know, because some people also, it's like a bragging for them. I belong to a born again. You know, it is not a name. Amen. It is not a question of I belong to a born again church. You can belong to a born again church and not be born again. Amen. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Verse 8. Because the wind blows, the things of the spirit are not things that you can be able to see with your naked eyes or understand with your flesh. Amen. So the wind blows where it wants. Okay. It is not in your power to command and determine where the wind should blow. He said, today, don't blow over my house. When was the last time you told the wind, don't blow over my house? I have this tree in front of my house. Don't blow over it. My dear, what was the last time you did that? You know, that is the power of the spirit. It blows where it listed. So you can come. The Holy Spirit will do what he wants to do. He locates which head he wants to Put a fire on. A list at where. Mm -hmm. You hear the sound, but you can not tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Amen. So this was a powerful revelation, and I've been teaching. So I thought about 10 things that are the same as being born again. Mention one. What is, you know, 10 things. Mention one. Huh? You're born of God. Uh huh. You're born of the Spirit. Hey, you've been here. All. Yeah, mention one. Amen. You're Christian. Huh? You're a saint. That is, you know, to be born again. The Bible describes you, then you become a saint. Hallelujah. It calls you a saint. That's how powerful it is. Then I talk about 20 things that are not the same as being born again. Mention one. Be a friend to the pastor. Uh huh. Miracles. Miracles. <laughs> Hallelujah. I only believe in miracles. Yeah, I believe in miracles, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't make you born again. Amen. And then what? To offering. Uh huh. I give the, the greatest offering in the church. And so, you know what? I have, yeah, we can give you the highest spot. You see? You know, our church, you know, when you go, you see some churches, they, some places are elevated. <laughs> uh, and those are where the gold things are all trimmed out there. You know, they can give you a place there. You are the one that gives all the, the biggest, you know, tight. You will give fine. But it doesn't make you what? Born again. So we've been trying to understand this. It's so 20. I mean, just to give you an idea that this is not something a Christian wants to joke with. When you come to the Lord, then I told you there are 10 possible things that can happen when you step up. A preacher says today, who wants to give their life to Christ? And you step up. There are 10 possible things that could happen. What is one possible thing that could happen? Huh? So you're afraid. So you come. <laughs> uh -huh. You want to impress. You want to impress. Maybe there's a sister there. You want to impress the sister that look. To, from today, you can see that I'm born again. So now, yeah, me and you. Amen. Are you still here? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we realize that, okay, after all that, how can I still describe myself as born again? How do I know? That became the critical question. How do I know that I'm born again? So he woke up in the morning, then started feeling a little dizzy. And then the temperature shoot over 100. And after some few hours, realized some sore throat. The throat was not 
Then he started coughing <laughs> a little bit. And then before evening, he realized the joints were not, you know, started, you know, weak. What do you think is happening? <laughs> Amen. But you see, so how do you know that it is the, the wind blow where it listed? You cannot see it, but you can know by the sign. And the sign is that you see a leaf that is waving. You say, oh, there's wind passing here. Huh? A mild one and not a tornado. You can, so we give them different names. Hallelujah. So we realize that, you know, as a Christian, you can know you are born again when you begin to observe the signs. Mm -hmm. Amen. Or I can tell, or someone can tell that this one truly is born again when we begin to see the signs. So we say, then we need to learn the signs. You say, and so that we can begin to re-examine ourselves. The whole message is for each and every one to re-examine now. Take the signs. It is just like somebody says you have COVID. You say, oh, I don't have. Because I don't think my joints are paining me. <laughs> Even though I have some little sore throat. Amen. See, by then you can. You can examine yourself. And then what happened? Somebody will say, you know, no, but this one, don't deny. Just go and test yourself. Then you can test yourself to see, am I in the Lord or not? Do I have what Jesus is saying? Because tomorrow can come and I'm gone. And then he says what? I was not born again, so I can't enter into the kingdom. I have never entered into the kingdom. That is how serious it is. To immediately examine you know, an examined life is not worth living. So this is one of the most dying messages, I believe. It's a Christian. And you should open all your heart to. So we're saying, you know, signs, they come in different forms. They are early signs. See, someone who came, one of the, uh, you know, uh, things that could have happened to that person is that, yeah, the, the person genuinely, out of a broken hand, came and said, Lord, I heard your word. I want to be with you. I want to receive you truly as my Lord and Savior. That is one possibility out of the ten. Amen. Amen. And how do you tell that that is one possibility out of the ten? Because immediately you begin to see what? Early sign. Early sign. Amen. Amen. A person walk out. The next time you see, you begin to say, ah, this one truly, something has touched their heart. Amen. Something is working in this one. Some transformation is happening. And the person himself will wake up and say, ah, huh, the things I used to do, I think them no more. The places I used to go, I'm not feeling them anymore. The things I used to say, my mouth does not me open anymore. There's a great change since I came forward. Amen. You yourself begin to see that something is happening to me. So what is the first early sign? The cry. It's like a baby. When there is no cry. The crying, it's basically the, oh, nah, 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 nah. where have I come to? Uh -huh. Especially when you're born, maybe in Mali or Niger somewhere or in Ghana or somewhere when the heat passed because either at home or the hospital and the heat just passed your nose. And it says, nah, nah, where is this? And maybe it's in Holy Cross and then the cry will be, nah, nah. Cool. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh Lord, I fall into a, a good ground. <laughs> but the first thing is the cry. No matter whether you're Mali or you are in City Grove Hospital or where, there is a cry. The cry is the yearning. The cry begins to show the sincerity and the genuineness. That yes, when I stood and I said, yes, I receive you, Lord. Indeed, Lord. Something was taking place in my heart. What is the second early sign? Huh? The sucking. Hey, somewhere. 
please note the signs. The signs are very critical. Huh? The second, begin now to latch, you know, to. See, that is why it's not good to be denying the children, you know, the milk. You want to give the breast to your husband and not the child. Some, after one week, the husband is sucking, the child is not sucking. <laughs> Forgive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The baby begins to crave. And the only way you know it's even you, a stranger. You put your hand just close to that baby's mouth. It wants to grab it. They grab your hand tight and they want to, everything they want to put in the mouth. They begin to suck. The real sign is you begin to see that person earning and yaking for the things of God. Oh, pastor, I was reading this today. I didn't understand what is it. Can you? Oh, where the children are gathered, I am there. If something is taking place, then you say there is a sign. The same way that you know COVID. That is what Jesus is saying. That is the same way you can tell the wind. You can see it. But you can know something is happening. Amen. And then what is the third early sign? You hold on. This new faith that I've discovered. This new joy that I've discovered. Amen. I mean, the things that have been happening to you all of a sudden, it looks as if you have broken free. Free of that addiction. That is completely destroying you. Your home is completely destroyed. God has actually given you a wonderful family. It's been destroyed. But all of a sudden, you see hope. And you begin to hold on. You see, there's really something good in this. Something sweet in this. You see, those are the early signs. When you don't see those early signs, you know that there are nine other things that are happening. That is why you can say in the church, see, there are people who have been going to church for 10 years, but they are not born again. Because it's a true conversion of the heart. Not a question that I've come back and I've come back, but what shows that your heart is truly converted? What shows that you begin to believe in what you have received and allowing the Holy Spirit Except you'll be born by the water and of the spirit. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. amen. So then I started talking about 30 later signs. And so you've been, now it's past six months. Then you begin to see that the person is maturing. There is no baby that you give birth to. Huh? Your baby the other time, you put a picture inadvertently on the WhatsApp and we're all saying, I wonder, we're crying all the time. It's talking. Amen. It's beginning to talk. Something is happening. Then you're asking yourself, in which direction am I heading in this new faith? And so we said they are, you know, later signs but let's open our bible hmm? because see the first later sign is what hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 hmm? that you need to now present your body you need to do what present your body you are now presenting this is a time now, you see, a matured person. The baby has to be carried. A baby has to be told what to do. A baby, that is why they are in the crib. You go into the mall, they're in the crib. <laughs> you go into what they are, you carry. Huh? Here is crib. Somewhere is the back or the front or whatever. They are carried. But there's a point. You begin to present your body. That is a sign that you are actually maturing uh -huh, in your newborn faith. You are born again. You are being strengthened in the Lord. Strong meat belongs to those who, you know, are maturing and exercising their senses. Joyce, amen. 
because that is the first sign you will see there where foreseen also that we are compassed Romans 12 Romans chapter 12 amen verse 1 amen I beseech you therefore brethren what's the meaning of I beseech I beg you I'm begging of you I'm desiring of you Richard, I'm, 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 I don't know what is, I, I, brethren, by the mercies of God. This is how much, you know, Paul took it so, so personal. The salvation, so personal. It's by the mercies of God that present yourself. Come to a point as a Christian that you are presenting yourself. Amen. And this morning you dress nicely and say, Lord, I come to present myself, my body. I'm presenting the body. Man is spirit. Your body. You see, when you're presenting your body, and what we said last week is that it's like, you see, when you are still a baby, you cannot present your body. Uh -huh. The body presents you. So you are before Donald Trump. The great president, amen. And then you decide, I'm just going to wee wee. <laughs> I'm sure you will take some good look at you, <laughs> amen. Oh, I'm going to poo poo. Eh, babies, they wee wee, they poo poo anywhere, anyhow. Because when the body says, This is what I want, they just give it, amen. So, a baby Christian, still the fornication, you can stop, the insult cannot stop. The, you know, just begin to name them. You are not presenting so your body say, I desire sleep, it says sleep. I desire, it say do. I, this one, today, I want to have sex, it say have. Drink, it say drink. You see, so you haven't come to a point where you're able to now present your body, you see. The early signs have come, but then you mature to a point where you're now presenting your body. Amen. So that is the first later sign, amen. Don't have too much time. The second later sign is what? You become what? You know, a living sacrifice. If you pray, a living sacrifice. See, a living sacrifice now, Kofa, basically it's that as a Christian now, you have so many choices and then you are now going to decide what sacrifices I'm going to make. Today is a sacrifice between your sleep and your prayer. It is now a sacrifice between, you know, doing this or reading, your coming to church or going to work. Doing that and that, you will begin to present yourself a living, not a dead sacrifice. The dead do not worship the Lord, do not praise the Lord. The man we buried, David, on Saturday is finished. So Bible it's saying you present yourself living. Don't wait until you're dead and say now, okay, I can come to church. Lord, I can now praise you. The dead do not. Amen. You come to church, they live song praising God. You are there like Egyptian mummy. Amen. Are you dead already? Present you so you as a living. So the second thing that you begin to observe by yourself is that now. I'm breaking down all the barriers. Coming to church is no more problem for me. Praying is no more problem for me. Reading my Bible, oh, it's no more an issue for me. It means you begin to present living sacrifice because there are so many other things that you could have been doing. Amen. Are you hearing the word of God? Amen. I was telling a brother the other time, you know, hey, if I want to dwell on there, I won't say anything. Huh? That this is what the Christianity is. Jesus and the Christianity is handed down to us. It is full of what choices. Amen. You can decide for yourself. I don't care about this one. This is what I want. It is your choice. Yes, I'm preaching it. Amen. Amen. It is your choice. What sacrifice are you ready to make? That is the sign. That is why somebody can see and say, this one, uh, 
born again this question this one it's yeah you have to ask yourself for sacrifices amen and then we said the third the third is which one huh your reasonable service god is not so unreasonable that is going to cause you don't go to work amen because i mean that is where he commands his blessing for you to get your daily bread when you say lord give us today our daily bread every time you enter to that work first thing should strike you is that thank you god you're providing daily bread and then even the supervisor insulting you say thank you god amen because that is all we don't realize that is all we don't recognize to trials and tribulations sometimes god purpose it maybe just for some purpose for you just keep giving thanks to the lord i thank you for this work even though i'm crying lord i'm thanking you even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death lord i thank you amen because that is the daily bread so god is asking for reasonable service it is not too much to wake up and pray if you believe because when you're praying it's just you saying lord before i step out today i know that you are the one that holds me because they said there's a day you will walk out of your house and you won't come back you don't know if it's that day you say lord let it not be today <laughs> i'm going out and i'll come back Amen. that dining table that i've spent Five thousand and having ate on it before, <laughs> Lord, I'm coming back at least to see it. <laughs> Hallelujah! So that begins to tell you, you know, when you can give reasonable service. Huh? To some Christianity, it's almost like pulling hair out of their nose. Oh yeah, they do it not because they have all the heart in what they do. They do it because it's convenient and also for someone to see that yeah, I'm also a Christian. Being a Christian, Jesus didn't tell Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Jew of Jews. He was of the highest secular. But Jesus was telling him, except you are born again. And today, Jesus is telling you, except you are born again. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to continue, you know. We're going to continue today and time is already gone amen you see but the three cardinal things that we need to understand as we're going through all this steady signs of being born again you see one is that everyone has a body and has a spirit who doesn't have a spirit maybe you can raise your hand let me see amen mm -hmm. so that is cardinal it's a principle that everyone has a spirit and you have a body. Is that not true? Okay. The second cardinal principle you need to understand in, is that the body of an unbeliever is bad and the spirit of an unbeliever is bad. Amen. Bad, bad, bad. Amen. That is why, you know, when you step out, you see so many things that happen that make you shake your head because it is bad. Mm -hmm. The body of your neighbor who is looking at your wife and wants to have your wife. Amen. Because the body is bad and the spirit is bad. So there is no counsel in there, you know, to actually moderate that body. Whatever the body wants to do, it will do it. Amen. And that is why we said unbelievers are dead. See, you can go to Adam the day you do this, you will die. You die in your spirit. Even though your body is still working, but that body is dead. It's just waiting to go to the ground. Amen. So that is, it's a second cardinal principle that we need to understand while we're learning about, you know, this 30. We're going to go through 30. 30 signs. That indicates and show to you that you are born again. Amen. And then the third principle, you know, it's that Every believer uh, has a bad body, but a good spirit. Amen. Who doesn't have a bad body? 
maybe lift up your hand. Copy. Do you, is your body bad? Huh? <laughs> hey, I didn't know. Hey, David, is your body bad? At times. <laughs> hey, amen. You see, the body we have, if you leave it to the body, his body will do whatever he wants. The body wants to cheat someone. This body wants to insult someone. They will say, hey, I can stand for that. This body wants to, you know, even just sometimes pump things into it without even the regard for what is going in. <laughs> Left to the, so Our body is bad. There is nothing good about our body. Amen. Hmm? Look at it. Galatians chapter 5. You see, it says what? Well, the fruit of the spirit. But before then, you will see what? The fruit of the, the flesh. Hmm? Galatians chapter 5. Amen. If you go from 19 there, you will see the fruit of the body and the list all that. That is why it's the principle that the body is bad. Hmm? The works of the flesh, they will manifest. Adultery. Amen. Have you heard of adultery before? Uh-huh. Are the people in church not commit adultery? Hello? Okay. What about fornication? Do people in church not for commit fornication? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you go to, but then it says the only thing that will make you born again is your spirit man becomes good. See, go to it. The fruit of the spirit. What is it? 22. Huh? Now the fruit of the spirit is love. It's joy. It's peace. It's now somebody slap you. They say, Lord, I give it to you. Somebody insult you. They say, Lord. Somebody cheat you. You say, you know, that it's a sign. You begin to say, hey, is it me? Or something else is happening to me. Formally, I could have, I wouldn't have stand for this. <laughs> My dear, has it not happened before? Hey. For, you see, so it, it's a sign that the body actually, which is bad, does not have control. Because if it's left to the body, you are going to do what bad. See, that is why a Christian who does not walk by the spirit and for you will fulfill the last of the flesh. Amen. The last because the flesh is lasting. And if you don't allow your spirit man mature in the spirit, but you are a follower of Christ and all you're maturing is what? Your flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So today I'm going to give you, you know, three more and then we go. Number four. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. A signs, a later signs, as you continue with the Lord, as you continue with the church, as you keep coming to church, these are the signs that you need to be observing. And that gives you, you know, the confidence that, Lord, I am born again. And be not conformed to this world. Amen. So that is the point number four. Be not what? Conform to the world. Be not conformed to the world. Conformity means what? You want to do what the world does. Be not, I mean, I don't know if I went to the dictionary, I want to say what? To behave according to the usual standards of behavior that are expected by a group or society. No, what does society expect of you? Amen. Amen. What does your husband expect of you? What does your boss expect of you? What does your neighbor expect of you? What does, you know, America expect of you? Be not conformed to the world. As a born again, you begin to ask yourself, in which ways am I conformed so much to the world? The friendship with the world is at what? An enemy to God. Don't be conformed. 
So one of the signs of being truly born again is that you see that you no more conform to the world. You have become different. It is good to be different. You're a Christian. Nobody ever observed and then told you before that oh, your friends that you used to have, you still have those friends and they never in one day tell you that, oh, you are you different. Amen. Then you say, I'm born again. You still have the same friends. You still have the same conversations. You still have the same plans. You still take the same, but they never, because there is no difference. You, what are you doing? You're conforming. You're conforming. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to be able to say yes. It's different. You know, I always say my wife, that time people would say, oh, oh, she's a truly angel. All this and that. Yeah, it's a testimony that she's not only working, but somebody's bearing testimony that you know there is something else in. And it's showing off. It's a happy angel. Amen. Yeah. When I hear that, then I say, hey, when will somebody else tell me to that me too? I'm different. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you still here? I mean, the things I used to do, you come to church, you have been in church for 10 years. You don't even have any friend in church that you will say, come, let us reason together. There is no point in your time, you know, but you conform. Do be no more conform to the world. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Are you gone home? You must be happy to be different. Let them call you different. Let them say you are different. Your co-worker never said you are different. Because when they see you, they see even more devil than themselves. The conversations you have, the relationships you have. You see, this is one way to ask yourself, am I truly born again, Joyce? The spirit of a born again Christian is good. It brings joy. It brings peace. It brings long suffering. It brings, am I showing forth the fruit of the good spirit? Or am I still in the world? Because you can be in the church and be in the world. The unbeliever has what? A bad flesh and a bad spirit. It cannot be in and working and not show forth. It will show forth. You will see the sign. You won't have the COVID virus working in you. And the signs will not come forth. Hallelujah. Uh, no, no, no. So far, scientifically, nobody has said the virus is working. Even if you are asymptomatic or whatever, you know, you see that you, at least you are letting out. <laughs> Amen. You are giving something. So as for me, I'm the shy type in the church, but at least you're letting something out. Because your spirit man is good. Amen. Spirit man is good. You are not conform to the world. How many times do we see? Oh, I love my friends. Oh, no, they are the one that excite me. Oh, I love my this and that and that. Are you born again? Ask your neighbor, are you born again? Yeah. Point number five. But be ye transformed by renewing. So what? The second of point number five is what? Be transformed. Mm -hmm. There must be what? A transformation. Transformation. You cannot be the same. It's what Jesus told Nicodemus. If you truly want to enter the kingdom of God, you cannot be the same. It is not how much scripture you are able to recite. But the spirit, no way it? Transform, you're transformed completely. Amen. Tell somebody transformation. You see, it's a drastic change in appearance. 
See, Jesus took his disciples, Peter, James, John, and they went to what? Transfiguration. And said he was what? Changed completely. His countenance, his image, his character, his speaking, his relationship, his everything changed. So people say he's transformed. David is no more the same. He's been bearing testimony. He said, oh, I go to my friends. And then they are wondering. They say, you, what is, what is wrong with you? But because he's being transformed. There is a transformation taking place. He is no more the same person. Doing the same things. But he's transformed. That is a sign of being born again. Am I experiencing some transformation? My relationship with my husband, my relationship with my wife, my relationship to even the family that I'm building. What, what, I, I used to be harsh. I used to be, you know, but my spirit man is changing. I am, I see that I'm different. I now speak softly. I, I don't insult anymore. I don't backbite. I don't. There's a transformation. That is where you tell yourself. Don't say your name is in a church book. Yes, we will mark it. But will you enter the kingdom of God? That is a question you need to ask yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. No, because some, I mean, there are so many people, especially in this land we live. Say conform to the world. And so ask for America. Ask for. We don't pray anymore. Because we are in America. We have to conform. There is a demand on us. You know. So we cannot be Christians. As for America. We don't come to church. Amen. It's a demand on us. Then you ask yourself. Accept you be born. Let Jesus' voice be echoing your head because you want to enter the kingdom of heaven. Anybody here who doesn't want to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Amen. I believe we all want to. And then let me give you the last point for today. He said, well, You must renew your mind. You cannot have transformation. You know, without renewing your mind. You see, the mind is like a computer. What you put in is what remains in it. Whatever you download in, amen. You will see a white hates black. There are many things that we grow up with. It is called, you know, environmental factors you know, community and social, you know, they all, it's like a good man has come to sow the wheat and then a bad person has come to sow the tares. When you're growing up, that's what happens. Wheat and tares. Ah. And at that point, Jesus says, leave them. When they grow, you will be able to sort it out. There comes a point where you need to be sorting out. That is why it says now, the spirit of a born again, you take a stand. You see, it comes a point he needs to stand and say, Lord, I receive you. Then he begins to sort out the wheat from the tears. Renewing now the mind. Amen. So you grow up in a neighborhood where you are white and then they hate black. You become born again. You don't carry the same prejudice. Because the spirit inside you now begins to bear fruit of love. When you hear someone say born again and say have the same prejudice, then you say, ah, that is a born again. Huh? Maybe he doesn't know Galatians 5.22, that there's fruit of the spirit. And to be born again is born of the spirit. You're transformed within your spirit. Hallelujah. I mean, you take a church. And for me, it's always sad. The kingdom of God doesn't really even mention about denomination. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Did he say anyone who is a Presbyterian who calls the name of anyone who is a light out or any? No, anyone who calls. 
by even you find within the same denomination oh this one is from liberia and this one you even hear oh this one is a ghanaian church oh this one is a, oh i don't i won't go to this church because you know it's not american church oh, it's not you know then you ask yourself what is the born again you thought that when the children of god come together and the spirit comes within them they have become one in christ what then is it to be born again why then do i still have the discrimination tendencies with them why why can i love my neighbor as myself they are only two laws if i say i truly love god and say what well, then love your neighbor because god you cannot see but your neighbor you can see then why do i still have you see then you ask yourself you mean like there's no transformation i'm not renewing my mind i used to fornicate or adultery when i you know i've been but why am i still thinking that way because when you can't declog it take it off and you begin to see your way very clearly There's so many people are walking in the house of god and they are like blind that is why they're waiting for someone always to go put a hand and then pull them but you don't even know that person also whether you can even see where they are going amen hallelujah you see i gave you a revelation when the holy spirit came he did not only go to peter or to james or to paul or to all the 11 you know disciples who were there the 120 everyone received a tongue of flame you want a prophet now to hold your hand you want a pastor to be the one holding your hand you will never actually renew your mind you know by not conforming to the world you want to conform to the world but the pastor she should not conform to the world come and hold your hand amen hallelujah but that is what we've reduced the kingdom of god to you know there was a testimony about this pastor and i'm going to end you know before he came to christ he was working in the sex industry amen <laughs> amen <laughs> uh, so he was you know he was working in the sex industry so when he got he came forward you know and gave his life to christ and started going to church for him you know the way to demonstrate love is to have sex with the ladies in the church he his understanding of love is that you have to sleep with someone then you show your love <laughs> amen so he was flowing them one by one by one <laughs> amen if you're a brother in the church and you are always just may the holy spirit find you out and help you through this story amen so one time one of the holy sisters was on his bed <laughs> and he was doing his usual love he was loving then in the middle of the night he said his eye open when his eye open he saw at the foot of the bed this black you know something black was standing at the foot of the, the bed and then he vanished <laughs> if it's you what will you do <laughs> amen wow the guy became disturbed you see by this time he has been in the church for some time amen today he's a pastor and he was giving testimony he himself was saying yeah when i was in the church this is what before i became before i got the recognition so when he woke up his heart was troubled then he decided okay i'm going to take the bible and see look that something is wrong then he chants on the word fornication that before you marry you cannot just be sleeping with people and say i'm sharing love amen and when he got that revelation he changed his that is the renewing of the mind his mind when we come every time god wants to show you something that will cause you to be able to walk 
in righteousness. One of the fruit of the Spirit is what? Righteousness. Walking upright. Way to know you are born again. So I'm going to conclude today. I know my time is finished. Just a critical question. You know, I had somebody ask this question. Are you a thermometer or are you a thermostat? Ask yourself. Are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Somebody say, I don't understand what is a thermostat. Huh? See, a thermometer reflects the environment. You have a thermometer or in your car or whatever, it will tell you this is a temperature. Is that not it? But a thermostat sets the tone for the environment. Or in other words, it determines what, how the environment should be. As a Christian, ask yourself right now, am I a thermostat or am I a thermometer? Do I just follow the world and no is it? Just live in the world and reflect the world. Oh, today is 75. Yeah, let's live. You know? Oh, today is 85. Okay. Oh, do you influence your environment? What about your house? What about your relationship? What about your workplace? Are you a thermostat? What about your church? What about are you a thermostat? Are you able to set the tone? As a Christian, as a believer, as someone that the Lord has called and poured his precious blood upon you and delivered you, are you? Is there so much has happened in our life? Uh, because we are so much blinded to the love of Christ that we don't examine ourselves so we can go in the right path. You know, I'm going to conclude with Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. I have so much to say, but time will not allow. Matthew, we must not conform. A thermos, you know, a thermostat does not conform. A thermostat sets the tone. A Christian, a born-again Christian, is supposed to set the tone everywhere you are. Let your light so shine that people will see and they will give glory. Let's say, yeah, this one is different. This one is truly a child of God. I can feel it. I can feel it. That is completely different. And you are a thermostat. But how many of us are thermostats? And we are just thermometer. Let's go with the flow. There is a broad path. And that way leads to destruction. And many are they that are found on that path. And we found ourselves just on the broad path, just reflecting the atmosphere around. Oh, I'm in America. Oh, you know, you know, and this is the way we do. This is the way they do it. And they do things, and we are all, you know, huh? Than this one. This it is, this is it. Or you want to be true born again, be a thermostat. Let people see a reflection of the Lord. Be an advertisement for the Lord Jesus Christ. When people see you, they will see Christ. It's not that the word is finished, but it's that time is finished. Shall we rise to our feet? Amen. You want to just thank the Lord today? Born again is to renew. Or hard and soul. Maybe you've been in church and like the pastor, you also have a testimony. He changed. Oh, yes. When the revelation came, have you received a revelation today? Why don't you just lift your hand to the Lord? Ask the Lord, Lord, make me a, a thermostat. I want to be able to influence. Oh, yes, my relationships. I want to be able to influence my church. I want to be able to influence my community. I want to be able to influence my children. I want to be able to influence my co-workers. I want to be able to, to be all oh, the light the Lord assigns in darkness. Right now, speak to the Lord. Just pray for him. And now, if there's a confession in your heart, just like that pastor, they say, Lord, I have been blinded. 
Oh, I didn't know. I've been walking in the wrong path. There is a way that seems right, but the end is death. Name of Jesus Christ. But if you have not received the Lord, that you're listening to me, you know, on Facebook, on Zoom, whatever, or you are here standing in front of me, you have not confessed Him before, then you have not started. I've given now, you know, many points. There's now six later signs of being born again, but you have not even started the journey. You need to confess Him as a Lord and Savior. So with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, you want to come to the Lord? Just lift up your hand. I just want to pray with you. Set through your heart sincerely today and say, Lord, I want to confess you. That is a sinner's prayer which ushers you into, oh yes, be born again. Then you can begin to walk and begin to bear the signs that shows you are truly of Christ. Anyone want to give their life to Christ today? You want to say the sinner's prayer? In the name of Jesus. Okay, just pray this prayer with me. You never know, maybe someone I can see you. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. I'm ready to take a sinner's prayer today. That I've seen against heaven and against you. I've walked in my flesh and the futility of my mind. And I've followed the world and the things of this world. But I stand at this juncture to receive you as my Lord and my Savior. From today, I pull the world behind me and I'm looking up to you, Lord. Make me a newborn person. I'm born again. May I begin to cry. May I begin to pray for the milk. May I begin to show the signs, Lord, as I walk out of here. Oh, that my days now will conform, Lord, to your ways. I am transformed by this prayer. I have become one of the lost children in Jesus' name. This is a prayer of faith. If you pray this faith, this prayer, you will see on your screen. That is the first cry. Crying out. And say, yes, I am born again. That shows you are born again. Call and get help to begin to do the things that usher you into the kingdom of God. Amen. In the same spirit, we're going to receive our communion. 